Hi, welcome to this tutorial on sketching exponential functions. So what is an exponential function? Well, it's something of the form y equals a to the power x, where a is a constant and it's greater than zero. Functions like that are going to be, for instance, y equals 2 to the power x. Or what else could we have? or y equals 3 to the power x, y equals 1 and a half, or 1.5 to the power x, and y equals, say, a half to the power x. Let's just put that in brackets there. All of these, then, are various forms of exponential functions. Now what I want to do is show you what the graphs of these look like. They all have similar kind of properties. Now let's look at the graph of y equals 2 to the power x. If you wanted to plot this, then what you'd need to do is set up a table. Let's say we've put x and y here. And let's say as well we just sketch it from between minus 3 2, 3. So we have minus 3, minus 2, minus 1, 0, 1, 2, and 3 as our points there. And anything to the power 0, and this is going to be a common feature amongst all of these, anything to the power 0 is always 1. So we know that 2 to the power x then is going to be 1 when x is 0. Let's start with 1. 2 to the power 1, well that's going to be 2. 2 to the power 2, that's going to be 2 squared, 4. 2 to the power 3, 2 cubed, that's going to be 8. Now when it comes to minus 1, 2 to the power minus 1 is going to be 1 over 2 to the power 1. In other words, 1 half, or 0.5. 2 to the power minus 2 would be 1 over 2 squared, 1 over 4 in other words, a quarter or 0.25. And then finally 2 to the power minus 3 would be 1 over 2 cubed, 1 over 8 or 0.125. Okay, so we have 1 eighth there. Now if you were to sketch this graph or plot it, you would find that you would get something like this. The graph then of y equals 2 to the power x goes through 1 here on the y-axis. And you can see that it gradually approaches the x-axis. It doesn't actually cross the x-axis. If you were to let your values of x get more negative here, it would get closer and closer and closer to the x-axis, but never crossing it. The x-axis is called an asymptote. All right? So we've got a graph then looking like this. It rises very rapidly here as we get more positive numbers into here. This goes up. The next number for 4 would be 16 up here. After that it would be for 5, 32. So you can see it shoots up like this. Okay, so that is the graph then for y equals 2 to the power x. Let's have a look at the graph now for y equals 3 to the power x. If we were to set up a table for this, we'd have x and y, and let's say again we draw our table for values of x going from minus 3 all the way to 3. So we've got minus 3, minus 2, minus 1, 0, 1, 2, 3. You might even want to just pause the video now and think about what this would look like. Okay, so if you did have a go, let's just work our way through. Remember, anything to the power of naught is going to be 1, so 3 to the power of naught be 1. 3 to the power of 1 is 3, 3 squared is 9, 3 cubed is 27. When it comes to the negative powers, we get the reciprocal. We get 3 to the minus 1 is 1 third. 3 to the minus 2, 1 over 3 squared, 
one ninth. Three to the minus three, one over three cubed, one twenty seventh. You could convert these to decimals here, these fractions, but when it comes to plotting the graph, what's it going to look like? Well, it looks like this. You can see that to the right of the y-axis, the graph is a lot steeper than what we had for y equals 2 to the power x. It rises very quickly. But on the left-hand side, you can see it goes below the blue graph, the graph of y equals 2 to the power x. But again, it never crosses the x-axis. So the x-axis is an asymptote. Let's now turn our attention to y equals one and a half x. Okay, what's that one going to look like? Well, again, if we draw up a table for that, let's have our x and y values. We'll draw it again from minus three to three. So minus three, minus two, minus one, naught, one, two, three. So when you put minus three through, you should find you get 0 0.296 recurring. 296, 296, 296, and so on. So I put two dots over that. And 1.5 to the minus 2 turns out to be 0 0.4 recurring. 1.5 to the minus 1 is 0 0.6 recurring. Anything to the power 0 is 1. 1 1.5 to the power 1 is 1 1.5. 1.5 to the power 2 is 2.25 and 1.5 to the power 3 turns out to be 3.375. And again, if you draw this, let's see, what does it look like in comparison to these two graphs? Well, I would expect it to be lower than 2 to the power x. So let's see, yep, it looks something like that. It's lower than 2 to the power x on the right, but it, uh, you notice that on the left of the y-axis, it is now above the other two graphs. And again, it will never cross the x-axis, the x-axis being an asymptote. Now, what about y equals a half all to the power x? Now, before we look at that one, let's just take the very simple one, and that is the graph of y equals 1 to the power x. What's that going to look like? Well, 1 to the power anything is just always going to be 1. So what we're going to have is a graph going like this through the 1 here. Okay, a very basic graph, but nonetheless, the graph of y equals 1 to the power x. Let's just mark that in, y equals 1 to the power x. So when it comes to looking at the graph of y equals half to the power x, what's that going to look like, I wonder? Well, let's just draw up again a table for this. Okay, let's have our x here and y. And you might again like to pause the video if we were to draw it between minus 3 and 3. Just draw up our table here. So, anything to the power naught then, half to the power naught is going to be 1. Half to the power 1 turns out to be a half. Half to the power 2, half times a half, half squared is a quarter. And then a half cubed is 1 eighth. These values are getting smaller. And when we do half to the minus 1, that's 1 divided by a half, which is 2. When we do half to the power minus 2, it's going to be 1 divided by a half squared. 1 divided by a quarter, which is 4. And then finally, half to the power minus 3, 1 over a half cubed. 1 divided by 1 eighth, which is 8. So you can see these numbers get bigger. If you compare this to the graph of 2 to the x, you can see it's reversed. What we've got is essentially a reflection of the graph of y equals 2 to the power x in the y-axis. So what we end up with is this graph. As you can see, a reflection of the graph of y equals 2 to the power x. So as our a value 
reduces down to one, we see that the graphs come all the way down, then they would settle on this line y equals 1 to the power x but then when they go below 1 you can see that they start to switch sides okay they go they slope in the other direction so these functions where a is greater than 1 3 to the x and 2 to the power x and 1.5 to the power x these functions are increasing but when we get a value of a which is less than 1 but greater than zero, you can see that they are decreasing. All right, so I hope that's given you some idea now, something that you can work with on exponential functions. And you'll find other videos in this series and uh, other topics just by going on my website. There's indexes, playlists for your various syllabuses, etc.